Hello, welcome to the video for what is the material, the panner node. Here's a quick little example. Basically, the panner node lets us move the material itself based on the UV coordinates and gives us a kind of a little bit of a motion. So let's go ahead and see how this works. Let me go ahead, let me reset the panner node to defaults. Now the panner node is simply accessed normally by any other node, you can pull it up it's in the coordinate section. It's called Panner. When you bring it up by default, everything is set to zero. And if you hook up the Panner node, you're going to find nothing happens. Now your Panner node basically is going to modify the UV of anything that you hook it into. So a normal use would be to hook it into the UV input on a texture sample. So that way we can modify the coordinates. So that way it looks more like basically you're panning across the material and it gives a feeling of motion. But you'll notice by default, nothing actually happens. Well, the panner node, for whatever reason, comes in with no parameters set up. You have zero for the speeds, zero for the coordinate, and fractional part unchecked. Now you will notice there are two inputs. There's a coordinate input and a time input. These do not have to be hooked up, these are optional. If you'll notice, if you use coordinate unhooked, it's going to default to constant coordinate. Basically, it's going to leave the UVs by default on the panner itself. And if you do not hook in time, it's going to use the game time. So that way, basically, it's going to have a constant movement based on the time of the game. So let's go ahead and set this up just as a small little example. Your X and your Y speed determines the rate at which it's going to pan. So if we put this to something small like 0.1 speed X, you're going to notice it's panning across the X from right to left. Of course, we can make this negative. We'll do negative 0.1, and this is going to give us the opposite effect of left to right. And that's how basically you change the speed and what the motion is from left to right. If you want to go up to down, you can change the bottom one. Now your nose is going to move. Let's make this smaller just for ease of use. You're going to notice that it's now moving from the bottom to the top and from the left to the right because we've set the X and the Y. If you only want one to move, you only change one. Now, the next one is our constant coordinate. This is basically the coordinate UV set. If you are using customized UVs, basically if you're using them, you'll know what to use this for. Fractional part, basically, if the output is greater than zero or one, it sends in the fractional part as well as the value of zero. You know, let's say your value is 1.7. Normally it's going to only send a one. It's going to clamp it between zero and one. If you have fractional part checked and your value is greater than one, it's going to go ahead and send the fractional value as well. It's a, it's a way to get better precision if you need it, but for the most part, you're only going to be sending in small values into your material in the first place, so it's probably not needed. Now, to use the coordinate and time, time by default is game time. You could also stick a time node in here if you wanted to, if I can spell it correctly, but it's going to give you the exact same results because with the time node hooked up, you're getting the game time. And with the time node not hooked up, you're getting the game time. So there's no real use in putting a time node in there. You can put a scalar or a constant value in. If I was to go ahead and hook up this constant zero, you're going to see nothing happens. There's no value given to this panner node every frame in the time, co the time input. So therefore, it's going to increase it by zero. It's just as simple as that. If you were to make this, for example, a 0.5, you're going to notice nothing happens as well. The time node is not constantly updating, so therefore you're going to have a constant panner value. Now, it may seem like there's not much of a use for it, but if, for example, you were to drive this value by a timeline or something else, then it gives the ability, for example, to shift your pan in real time, then you can adjust in the blueprint. So for example, you could make this a parameter and then inside your blueprint, you could have it where it's shifting. Maybe it's 0.2 and it goes up to 0.7 
and it kind of simulates a shaking effect on your material. Maybe you're simulating an explosion or you have an error and you want to just vibrate slightly. Well, you can expose this parameter and you could set a manual time value and it's going to go ahead and adjust it. Because if you notice here, just to show this working, let's say we set this to zero. And we go ahead and we look at our value here. Now you notice this brick, if we zoom in, oops, and oh, crud, let's try this again. Let's get this flat, let's zoom in. Okay, if you look, you see a brick completely formed in the top left corner. That's because we're at zero on the UV tiling. If we change this value to something like 0.3, you're going to notice we've now panned and we no longer have that. We've panned up and panned to the right based on this fractional value we put in as the time. So that's why, for example, when you see it not hooked up, time is constantly changing, which is why you're seeing constant motion. A constant value plugged in, it's not changing unless you manually change this. And it's, like I said, it's useful if you want to change it later inside of a blueprint or something like that. So keep in mind, time does not have to actually be a time node. It can be a constant. Your coordinate is a simple coordinate input. Basically right here, for example, if I plug this in, what we're going to do is take our texture coordinate, multiply it by three, and put it into our coordinate input. And you're going to see we now have a much larger, well, it's a much smaller tiled, so it's much larger looking brick wall. And that's because we're sending in a three times multiplier to our texture coordinate. So instead of using our default constant coordinate of 1, 1, I multiplied it now I have a 3, 3, and we have much larger bricks. And that's because it's just a simple coordinate input and it basically takes in a UV. So those are your inputs, and that's how you use your panner node. Now the panner node can be applied like any other node, and I'll show you a small little variation of this. We'll go ahead and hook this up. This is a little water texture. What I've done is I have this value here moving at a 0 0.015 on the X, and this value here moving at a 0 0.01 on the X, and then multiplying them together. And what it does is it gives us this little effect where it kind of looks like you have two different layers. You have a bottom layer moving slowly and a top layer moving a little bit faster on top of it. So maybe like a little water current and something like that. Gives it a little bit of a depth because we're using a normal map and we're using the panner to pan it slightly at two different times. So that is our panner node. It's a great way of adding in motion or some form of a offset effect on your material itself, on a texture or something that takes a UV input and outputs a result in a nice organized fashion. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.